Hi there, I'm Buddha, and you're watching Dr. Guitar, a show for all you guitarists out there. In today's episode, I'm playing through a new, very, very new uh, acquisition of mine. I just bought it this week, and it's the Carlsbro Stingray Superhead. And I decided to do this episode uh, because there's a myth about transistor amps, in general, but mainly for, for guitars. The transistors don't sound good on guitars, you need to have a tube amp. And I have a lot of tube amps, and I really love tube amps. But there's exceptions, and there's there's no rules, actually. The Jazz Chorus, Roland Jazz Chorus, is a hugely known transistor amp used by many guitar players. And it all depends on what you are looking for in an amp. I was playing straight the Telecaster through the Stingray, the Cosmo String Stingray, through my magic, incredible, great sounding Lone Star Special 4x10 Mesa Boogie cabinet. I must say this cabinet is really incredible. Everything sounds good with this cabinet. It's out of this world, and it is a very bassy cabinet, a very dark one, very mid-range, low mid-range cabinet. So it also helps a lot the Carlsberg. But you heard it; it sounds incredible, and the distortion, the overdrive, is from the amp, which is one of the things I. It really killed me. Uh, it is a dark amp, and probably that's why it sounds great. So I'm plugging it into the bright channel of the first channel. So it is laid this way. You have one channel, I think they voiced it for guitar, and you have another channel, I think it is voiced uh, to bass. It reminds me my uh, Bassman 100 head, which has the opposite. The first channel is more bassy, and the second channel is more mid-rangey, more for guitar. So this channel sounds incredible with, with a bass guitar. It also sounds great for jazz, but it doesn't have no tremolo and no reverb. The first channel is the most complete. So it has a section that goes volume, uh, yeah, volume, presence, treble, middle, and bass. And then it has a second setting for gain and sus, which is kind of the overdrive section of it. Then you go to a reverb, which is a tank, a, a spring reverb, real spring reverb, and a tremolo. This is all for this channel, okay? Then you have the second channel, which has volume, treble, bass. Simple. And it is a fat channel, very, very uh, big sounding channel. I think it's too much of a low end for, for the guitar. Then you have a master volume, and, and that's it. And it is 120 watts. It's loud as hell. It has a lot of headroom, and the drive is incredible. So let me show you how the drive is foot switchable, as, as is the reverb and the tremolo. I don't have the foot switches, but I'm using it on, on the studio. So this is a 70s amp. OK, let me show you the clean channel as it was taking off the distortion. Mm -hmm. 
cutting off the reverb. Let me show you the great... Well, let's first just engage the other, uh, the normal input. It is already a great thing. Uh, there are pedals out there that allows you to allow you to kind of uh, go from a dark guitar like a Les Paul to a tele. With this amp, you just need to plug a tele into the normal channel, uh, a Les Paul into the bright channel, and you are in the ballpark. I think it's a great, a good, clean headroom. And it doesn't sound sterile to me at all. It sounds really good. Let's hear the reverb. <laughs> Strangely enough, the reverb makes it a little darker, so uh, with the reverb I probably would prefer in the bright input. It's a very dense reverb, and I cannot complain about it. Let's hear the tremolo. And the tremolo has a depth and a speed, so the depth allows you to engage the, the amount of tremolo that you're hearing, and it also almost changes the, um, the, sh the wave shape. So on max you have a, a, a chopped tremolo.
Just adding a little reverb. The reverb is first in chain, so the tremolo is not affecting the reverb as usual on a Fender amp. Usually on a Fender amp, if you play this, you will hear the tail of the reverb going with the tremolo. So they are the reverb first and tremolo second. I haven't tried it yet, but I feel I have found a great companion to my Fender Rhodes. This is a great clean amp, very beautiful. It, it can be very clean. It's, it's uh, at nine o'clock on, on the master volume, so it's a quarter of the, of the volume. And if we dial in the tremolo even quieter, gives you just that that flavor of being something happening and it is great I, I really love it and as for the drive you have two controls which uh, let, let's just try to distort the clean amp so pushing the volume of the channel all the way up and making the master volume quieter to, just to see if it overdrives <laughs> Yeah, that's why it sounds so good, because this is kind of a gain and it overdrives a little bit, it compresses and it's on a great point now. It sounds like a tube amp to me. Let's use the darker. Man, this sounds even killer. I, I haven't tested, I didn't test it this way, but 
there was something about it, it the compression of the of the input so this is the perfect setting for me to use pedals on because it is already on the verge of breaking up Perfect to me. Let's hear it with the sus, the sustain, of the sus circuit engaged. So the sustain, this as a click, as you can hear, and you engage the system. Then you have a gain and a sustain. So it's kind of a chaining gain, like like this goes to this, I think. It's all maxed out. Let's try it with um, the bright channel on. Man, this sounds even better than I than when I tested it. I hope this translates into the mics because the volume in here is incredible. I have it on less than nine o'clock on the master, and it is phew, freaking incredible. Let's test it with the BNG. That it is a very dark guitar. The the, the, the BNG. Uh, let's try it just to hear how it sounds. So let's try it on the clean setting and the bright channel. Thank 
let's hear it with drive no tremble drive engaged With the BNG, since it is a very fat guitar, if we engage just a clean channel, we can have a very warm jazzy tone, I believe. This is amazing. I'm really in love. And it is a cheap amp. It is very affordable, very, very affordable if you can find one, especially if you are in the UK because they were made in the UK. So they are very affordable amps and they work great on a lot of sources. Let's hear it on bass. So this is my Maton bass. It's made in Australia. It is kind of a precision jazz bass i'm using just the precision pickup and a little the tone a little cut off and i'm not by any means a bass player i'm a guitar player playing bass but just to let you know how it sounds <laughs> I have flat rounds on this bass, so it is a vintage sounding bass. Let me hear just it as a... With all on 10.
and it is a stupid great sounding bass amp let's cut let's try to eq it put it, it was with the bass high let's put the bass it was with the um, treble a little pushed so let's put the bass a little better and both pickups tone on 10. Just the precision pickup. I really, really love this amp even more than when I tried it. And I wasn't not even looking for it. I was looking for some Carlsbro amps because there are some great amps, but I've never thought I would like a transistor amp. The thing is that I was looking for this bass, which I ended up buying. This is an Ibanez from 76, short scale bass. Um, it is not in a very good shape, the electronic parts, but all the rest is good. Uh, and I have some issues with the truss rod. Well, that's for another episode. But uh, the guy that was selling the bass was also selling the Carlsbrew, and I tested it just, uh, just because. And I like it, especially because of the tremolo and the reverb. It sounded okay. I didn't test it too much. The pots were all messy, and they are still a little bit messy. They are not in a great shape. I have to fix it, but it is way better than it was. And it, I, I felt like it was a good, a good buy. Now, doing the episode, I really put it to its spaces. And man, <laughs> I'm really blown away. I think this will probably become my Trio Pagu amp. This will probably become my Fender Rhodes amp. The bass amp for some some stuff, an overdub amp, definitely. I teach guitar on Skype here, and the Lone Star, which is the amp that I usually use, has a fan, and it's like, it's very tiring, it's very uh, consuming. If you are playing it at low volumes, you will hear the fan a lot. So this is a great basic amp with a good clean tone. If I want to drive, it drives. I really, really like it. Great buy. <laughs> well, that's it. I hope you have liked the show. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, share it with the world, and we'll see each other next week. Bye-bye.